BTS, Blackpink, Icon, XO, VIX, G-Idol, NCT. The Korean wave has arrived. K-pop has officially taken over the world. Now, some of the biggest artists in the world are the result of a booming idol culture that has brought incredible songs, unmatched choreography, and high concept production to a music revolution. Join us as we explore and celebrate the rise of K-pop. K-pop is a genre of popular music originating in South Korea. The modern form of K-pop can be traced back to the early 90s with the formation of one of the earliest K-pop groups, So Taiji and Boys, in 1992. The trio debuted on NBC's talent show on April 11, 1992, with their song Nan Arayo, and got the lowest rating from the jury. However, the song and their self-titled debut album became so successful that, according to MTV Iggy, K-pop music would never be the same again. Their experimentation with different styles and genres of music and integration of foreign musical elements helped reshape and modernize South Korea's contemporary music scene. Modern K-pop idol culture began with the boy band H.O.T. in 1996. From there, K-pop grew into a subculture that amassed enormous fandoms of teenagers and young adults. After a slump in early K-pop, from 2003, TVXQ and BOA started a new generation of K-pop idols that broke the music genre into the neighboring Japanese market and continue to popularize K-pop internationally today. With the advent of social media and Korean TV shows, the current spread of K-pop and Korean entertainment, known as the Korean wave, is seen not only in East Asia and Southeast Asia, but also in Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, Latin America, North Africa, Southern Africa, the Middle East, and throughout the Western world, gaining a widespread global audience. K-pop acts are divided into generations. Currently, there are five generations that are broken down in the following ways. The first generation are considered the founders of the genre, the ones who started it all. This includes acts like So Taiji and Boys, H.O.T., G.O.D., and S.E.S. 
second generation are widely considered to be the first groups that broke international barriers. TVXQ, Super Junior, Rain, Brown Eyed Girls. Third generation continued to push for international success and recognition. These include Block B, Sistar, After School, Miss A. Fourth generation grabbed the spotlight and forced it to shine bright on them, making storms both domestically and internationally. This includes acts like XO, RV, GOT7, and BOTB. Fifth generation is the current generation with BTS, XO, 17, Icon, G Friend, CLC, G Idol, Blackpink, Twice, Stray Kids, NCT, and Momoland. This is the generation leading the charge with a social media army at their back. This is K pop for the modern generation. We're gonna be taking a look at some of the biggest acts and their biggest hits as we chart the incredible growth of K-pop in the global dominating force it is today. K-pop groups are formed through entertainment companies. The quote, big three companies are JYP Entertainment, YG Entertainment, and SM Entertainment. Often the most successful and widespread groups come from here due to the attention they garner and the large investment they can make into publishing and promotions. But BTS is an exception to all of this as they are extremely popular, despite coming from a much smaller company, Big Hit Entertainment. In 2012, Psy's Gangnam Style was most of the world's early introduction to K-pop. The music video went viral and held as the most viewed YouTube video for five years. Its mix of outrageous visuals, tightly choreographed dancing, and catchy melodies struck a chord around the world. Kim Chi Cho, better known by the mononym Hee Cho, is a member of second generation South Korean boy group Super Junior and has further participated in its subgroup Super Junior T, as well as project group Universe Cowards. Prior to his debut in Super Junior, Hee Cho began his acting career in 2005, starting in the second season of teen drama Sharp 2. Subsequently, this led him to host his first music show show, Music Tank, appear on advertisements, and host radio shows. However, in 2006, just a year after his Super Junior debut, Hichol was involved in a car accident, which fractured his left leg. The accident left him unable to perform Super Junior's strenuous dances and made him instead focus on contributing to the group mostly as a singer. In 2009, Hee Chol ventured into the soundtrack singing career by releasing his first single, First Star, as part of the soundtrack for his drama, Loving You a Thousand Times. He also participated in writing the lyrics for not only his band, but also for his project groups and other artists. In 2019, Hee Chol debuted as solo singer by releasing his digital single, Old Movie. In 2010, Hee Chol became a regular cast member in Radio Star, where his popularity skyrocketed and he won Best Newcomer Award at the 11th NBC Entertainment Awards. 
Following that, he made a breakthrough in his television host career as appearing on Knowing Bros and Weekly Idol. In 2019, he was recognized for his role in reality shows and received the Excellence Award as the 13th SBS Entertainment Awards, his first major award as an entertainer. EXO is a South Korean Chinese boy band based in Seoul with nine members, Ju Min, Suo, Lei, Baekhyun, Chen, Chanyol, Dio, Kai, and Sehun. The band was formed by SM Entertainment in 2011 and debuted in 2012. Their music incorporates genres like pop, hip hop, and R&B, alongside electronic dance music genres like house, trap, and synth pop. The band ranked as one of the top five most influential celebrities on the Forbes Korea Power Celebrity list each year from 2014 to 2018, and have been named the biggest boy band in the world and the kings of pop by media outlets. On June 9, 2016, EXO released Monster, which would go on to become arguably their biggest hit. Monster is a dark and intense medium tempo dance song with lyrics about a man's excessive fixation on his lover. And the music video captures that essence with powerful imagery.
Blackpink is a South Korean girl group formed by YG Entertainment, consisting of members Jisoo, Jenny, Rose, and Lisa. Blackpink is the highest charting female K-pop act on both Billboard Hot 100 and Billboard 200, peaking at number 41 with Kill This Love and peaking at number 24 with Kill This Love, respectively. They're also the first and only K-pop girl group to enter and top Billboard's Emerging Artists chart. They're also the first female K-pop group to have four number one singles on Billboard's World Digital Song Sales Chart. At the time of its release, Doo 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 was the most viewed Korean music video in the first 24 hours on YouTube. And in January 2019, it became the most viewed music video by a K-pop group on the website. As of September 2019, Blackpink is the most subscribed music group on YouTube. In 2020, Blackpink collaborated with Lady Gaga on a brand new track featured on the album Chromatica titled Sour Candy. Um, at the very start, it's not just about, we don't, we didn't, like back in the days in 2013, we don't, I don't think we had like this, this big, big attitudes, like we're going to change the industry or we're going to change the whole world or we're going to influence like millions and billions of people. Um, what we could do and what we knew to do was just um, telling the stories, our ins um, what's our inside and to express it by the performances and the dances. In June 2013, Big Hit Entertainment debuted their latest group, BTS. But it wasn't overnight success for them. The early years were plagued with hardship and setbacks. It seemed as though the world didn't want them to succeed. But they never gave up. BTS are beloved by a dedicated army of fans that is literally called ARMY. Like an 11 out of 10. <laughs> I got no words, no words. I can't believe I'm here. Anyone in the BTS army can testify that it has been a long and challenging road becoming the superstar idols BTS are today. You know, as time goes by, we grew up and we got, we've been getting so much love from all the fans and they started to tell us that um, our message and our performances changed their lives and inspired us there so much. So um, for us, um, what makes us keep going and keep um, going through these whole hardships and ironies of this industry and this big fame, was that the words that um, we helped us, we helped them love themselves more and our stories and our message and our performances help them get the open mind and the, and the positivities. So um, it's like I expressed actually at one interview in 2014 that this is um, BTS and this thing is about charging each other's batteries. So um, we do our things and messages and performances and they tell us how we influence them. And it's like, it's like charging each other and at first, at 2013, um, we didn't have this specific attitude or like this big thing, but they changed us and I'm very happy to be um, able to do that. And we're very happy to be the messenger for many people's lives and the positivities. 
Thank you. BTS began its formation in 2010 after big hit entertainment CEO Bong Si Hyuk met with group leader RM and was impressed with his rapping. BTS was originally supposed to be a hip hop group similar to YG Entertainment's 1TYM. But between their initial formation and their debut, Bong Si Hyuk decided that the contemporary youth needed instead a, quote, hero who can lend them a shoulder to lean on, even without speaking a single word. The group was meant to debut in 2011 and featured on several tracks by artists such as 2AM and Lee Sung Gi before their debut was postponed and the group was reorganized into a more traditional idol group. The lineup was then finalized with Jin, Suga, J-Hope, RM, Jimin, V, and Jungkook in 2012. On June 12, 2013, BTS released their debut album, Too Cool for School, the first installment in their School Trilogy series, simultaneously with its lead single, No More Dream. It's almost shocking to see how much the group's aesthetic and music style has changed since this very early video. What was once gritty urban hip hop has transformed to their more modern mantra of self-love and self-expression. The song peaked at number 124 in Korea before quickly falling off the charts. In Too Cool For School, BTS employed an old school hip hop sound with scratches from the 1980s to 90s and excessively fierce visuals. From their inception, BTS was convinced that telling their story was the only way for the younger generation to relate to their music. Twenty fifteen was the year that BTS set their sights on taking the mainstream. Shifting their sound and image from solely aggressive, masculine hip hop to more diverse styles, BTS wanted to express the beauty and anxiousness of youth. Their third EP, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Part One, released in March 2015 and explored the growth and emotional agony of youth as well as its playful and uplifting sides. The lead single, I Need You, was BTS's first top five hit in Korea. The I Need You music video sees the members of BTS portraying discomforted youths running away from the past, and it was released on April 29th, 2015. The Most Beautiful Moment in Life Part 2 is the fourth BTS EP. The album was released on November 30th, 2015 by Big Hit Entertainment. It's available in two versions and contains nine tracks, with Run as its lead single. Thematically, the EP focused more on the serious and speculative aspects of youth, touching on the pursuit of success, loneliness, affection for their origins, and the suffering of the younger generation due to unfavorable conditions in current society. The album topped the weekly Gawan album and Billboard World Albums charts, and BTS became the first K-pop act to remain atop the ladder for multiple weeks. 
It also marked their first appearance on the Billboard 200 chart, peaking at 171 with over 5,000 copies. Their first Korean compilation album and the finale to their youth series, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Young Forever, was released in May 2016. It included three new singles, the top 40 hit Epilogue, Young Forever, the top 10 hit Fire, and the top 20 hit Save Me. The most beautiful moment in life, Young Forever, won BTS their first major Korean award for Album of the Year at the 8th Melon Music Awards. This award was a landmark to how far they had come. The boys were barely able to contain their emotions as RM gave a powerful speech thanking ARMY for their incredible support. Pre-orders for their second Korean studio album, Wings, released in October 2016 accumulated over 500,000 copies within the first week. Wings combined the themes of youth presented in their previous youth series with temptation and adversity and, for the first time as a major group effort, included seven solo tracks that demonstrated each member's potential and individuality as independent musicians. The album was generally well received by critics, with Rolling Stone naming it, quote, one of the most conceptually and sonically ambitious pop albums of 2016 while Fuse praised the, quote, vulnerable and honest song material and diverse tracks. The music video for the lead song, Blood, Sweat and Tears, gained over 6 million views within 24 hours, breaking the previous record held on YouTube for the highest number of views of a K-pop music group video within 24 hours. This was another groundbreaking music video for the group, combining high energy and high intensity with powerful high concept imagery. Wings opened at number 26 on the US Billboard 200, the highest chart ranking ever for a K-pop album, and BTS became the first Korean group to top the Billboard Social 50 chart that month. It was their first million seller album, moving over 1.5 million copies in South Korea that year. BTS were named the first artist not from a quote, big three entertainment company, SM, YG, and JYP, to win Artist of the Year at the 18th Mnet Asian Music Awards in December. 2017 saw BTS continue to skyrocket. In February 2017, BTS released the repackaged edition of Wings 2016, entitled You Never Walk Alone, featuring the single Spring Day. BTS commenced their second world tour, 2017 BTS Live Trilogy Episode 3, The Wings Tour, from February to December. 
The tour visited 12 countries, including Brazil, Australia, Japan, Hong Kong, and the United States, and gathered 550,000 fans. On the tour, BTS began to play progressively larger venues, moving from halls into arenas and domes. Tickets for the North American legs sold out within minutes, and two additional shows were added due to high demand, making BTS the first K-pop act to sell out arenas in the United States. After completing their North American leg, BTS attended the 24th Billboard Music Awards in May and won Top Social Artist, becoming the first Korean group awarded a Billboard Music Award. Army, our friend, and thank you very much. You know, we still cannot believe that we're standing here on this stage at the Billboard Music Awards. Oh my gosh. Following the depiction of growth and temptation in Wings 2016 and consolation in You Never Walk Alone 2017, BTS embarked on their Love Yourself series, which sought the enlightenment of self love through the narrative sequence of beginning, development, turn, and conclusion. In September 2017, BTS released the first part of the series, their fifth EP, Love Yourself, Her, and featured music from the Chainsmokers' Andrew Taggart for the track Best of Me. DNA was the lead single on the album and became a huge international hit. The music video broke the previous record for the most viewed K-pop group music video within the first 24 hours with more than 20 million views on YouTube. Love Yourself Her sent BTS higher than ever before. In November 2017, BTS became the first K-pop group to perform at the American Music Awards, raising their profile internationally. That same month, Guinness World Records revealed that BTS had earned a spot in their 2018 edition for having the world's most Twitter engagements for a music group. In the lead-up to their next album, BTS released an original eight-episode documentary series exclusively on YouTube Premium entitled Burn the Stage that ran from March until May 2018, offering a behind-the-scenes look at the group's 2017 Wings tour. In May 2018, BTS released their third Korean-language studio album, Love Yourself, Tear, in conjunction with an appearance at the 25th Billboard Music Awards. At the show, BTS debuted as performers with the premiere of their lead single, Fake Love, and won top social artist, making them the only Korean artist to win the award two years in a row. Love Yourself Tear also became BTS's top 10 hit in the United Kingdom, reaching number 8 on the UK Albums Chart. At the conclusion of the Love Yourself series, BTS released their second Korean compilation album, Love Yourself Answer, in August 2018, which contained songs from the previous Love Yourself releases, along with seven additional new tracks. The album was supported by the lead single, Idol, and the alternative digital release featuring Nicki Minaj. On September 6, 2018, the music video featuring Nicki Minaj was released. 
The music video is similar to the original music video, but with some additional scenes and Nicki Minaj rapping her part with Korean transliteration of the lyrics at her back. Love Yourself Answer received rave reviews, with Billboard calling it a, quote, masterful culmination of years of work and rife with meaning, and, quote, undeniably a magnum opus for BTS that few other artists, boy bands or otherwise, ever can hope to achieve. In conjunction with Love Yourself Answer's release in August 2018, BTS commenced their third world tour, BTS World Tour Love Yourself with a landmark concert in the Seoul Olympic Stadium, the largest stadium in South Korea. Crossing over to film, BTS released Burn the Stage, the movie, in theaters worldwide in November 2018 to commercial success. In the United States, it accumulated $1.2 million on opening day, for a total of $3.54 million over the three-day weekend, breaking the record for the highest-grossing event cinema musical production which was previously set in 2014 by the band One Direction. In February 2019, BTS attended the 61st Grammy Awards as award presenters. In April, BTS became the first Asian act to surpass 5 billion streams on Spotify, and Time named them as one of Time's most 100 influential people in 2019. Their sixth EP, Map of the Soul Persona, was released on April 12th with the lead single, Boy With Love, featuring American singer, Halsey. Map of the Soul Persona became the first Korean language album to reach the number one position in both the UK and Australia, and the group's third consecutive album to top the Billboard 200 and the third within 11 months, joining the likes of the Beatles, who achieved the same in 1995 and 1996. Following their two wins at the 26th Billboard Music Awards in May, including for top duo or group, BTS embarked on their world tour stadium extension, Love Yourself, Speak Yourself, with dates in multiple stadium venues, including Wembley Stadium. Yeah, we'll say hello first. Hello, we are BTS. Hello, we are BTS. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, please have a seat. We have many members of the press present here today, both from the UK as well as Korea and other parts of the world. Again, thank you for coming to our press conference today. As uh, announced earlier, simultaneous interpretation will be provided as well as consecutive interpretation in Korean. So our reporters from Korea will not need to use the receivers. So I would like to invite V first for his uh, hello. Hello, my name is V of BTS. First, I must say that I'm very thankful that I am able to perform here at Wembley Stadium, not just one day, but two days. Uh, we have a two-day concert. So we will try to do our best and try not to be too nervous and put on the best show that we can provide. Thank you. Hello, I am Suga. It's uh, an, an honor to meet all of these members of the press here at Wembley Stadium, and I think it will be a great experience. And this performance, as you know, is going to be broadcasted live all over the world, so it makes us nervous, but I think it's going to be, uh, so it's going to make us work even harder. So again, thank you for coming, and I hope you can also enjoy our performance. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Jin of BTS. I'd like to welcome you here and then thank you for coming all the way here to the UK for this press conference and this performance and many uh, there, the UK is famous for having produced many great artists, so it is an honor for us to perform here. And we will again put on the best performance that we, can, we possibly can. Thank you. Hello, I am Jungkook. It's again a great honor to perform here at Wembley, Wembley Stadium. And we only we first planned on one performance, but thanks to all the support from our army, uh, we are able to uh, provide another additional show. So we have to thank our fans for their love and their support and we will in turn try to put as perfect a performance as we can here tonight and i've also heard that this performance is going to be broadcasted live around the world so even if you're not here with us at the stadium i hope you can join us and enjoy us for tonight's performance thank you hello i am jimin of bts uh, again, I would like to thank the members of the press for being here today and joining us today. And last year, we had our first study. Yeah. <laughs> And this tour uh, last year, I think, was the beginning of all of this glory and this blessing that we have. So we'd like to thank the fans for giving us this opportunity to perform here again this year. Thank you. Uh, hello, I am your hope, J-Hope. So this is the performance that we've all been waiting for. We are here at the Wembley Stadium. It is an incredible honor to be here. And I must thank our fans for giving us this honor. And I think uh, it's, you know, our approach to the performance, I think, is the same. You know, we love, we are artists who love to perform. So we will all do what we've always done and do our best and write a our new history uh, here in this very historical venue. So again, I hope you enjoy our performance. Thank you. Hello, I am RM. I think the microphones are a little bit nervous. Microphones are very nervous because they kind of came to Wembley. So I think that's why the, the mics are as nervous as we are. This is a very symbolic and a very historical location. And to be able to do anything here, I think, is a great honor. And we are here today, uh, not only thanks due to our efforts, but also due to the efforts of all of our staff and all of you here and members of the media who have continued to uh, spread our news, news about us, and as well as show the love and the support that we have received. So I think we're very thankful and we feel very fortunate and we'll try to do the best we can uh, for today's performance. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So now we will receive questions from the members of the press. We'd like to ask you to ask one question per uh, person. Please tell us who you are, where you're from, and then please ask your question. If you uh, raise your hand, we will give you a microphone. Kogide from eDaily. I have two questions, if I may. Uh, one. Okay, I'll ask this one. I have a question to J-Hope. In May, you were on a American show, and it was a tribute to the Beatles. And now you're here in the UK, the land of the Beatles. And you, some people say that you are the Beatles of the 21st century. So how did it feel to have that tribute performance? And now you're here in the UK, uh, the, the home of the Beatles. I'm sure it's very special. So if you could tell uh, J-Hope, if you can tell us how you felt at the performance and uh, how you feel now, now that you're here in the UK. 
너무나도 영광스럽고요. Of course, it's an honor being on that TV program and sort of recreating the, the Beatles' performance and have that performance and with that theme, the Beatles' theme. Again, it was a, an amazing honor. And uh, of course, the Beatles are artists that we love. And I personally was very honored and very happy. 사실 이제 어, BTS는 BTS만의 Now, 음악과 BTS has its the BTS's own unique music and our own new color, our unique color. So I hope that we will continue to show and deal with and show our own color and our own themes and try to show the world and show to you, you know, our own color and our own music. And now here, we are here in the UK. And we want to show to the UK you know, who we are and our own color. And Wembley Stadium, of course, is a a very historical, a very important location, venue. So we have looked forward to this conference, uh, to this performance, excuse me, and we will try to show uh, and return the love that we have received with a great and fun performance. I hope you can enjoy the concert. You asked for an, an episode. Oh, um, any anecdotes or episodes from the TV show? Well, the uh, costume was very unique. Uh, so I think the members were amazed at the costume, the theme of the costume that we wore of the Beatles. And uh, now for me, personally, you know, I, I listened to some Beatles music before the performance, and then, of course, I sang Hey Jude during the interview, and the fans and the audience members seemed to really like it. And the band also played along to the song, so I think that was very special. And I think it was very fun, and the show was very comfortable. They made us feel like, very comfortable. To it, to Hi. Um, I just have a quick question Hi. from ITN, and we would like to know, is there a British band that you guys would want to do a collaboration with? Of course, I have loved Coldplay for years and listened to them forever, so... Uh, I always felt that I, when I came to the UK, uh, whenever I come to the UK, I listen to Coldplay in the car when I go to a performance. So if there's an opportunity, I'd like to work with Coldplay, and that'd be great. If there's an opportunity. Well, they came to Korea um, like years ago, and me and Jeho went to the went to the concert. It's like a it's like a Wembley in in Korea, and they came. So we saw Chris Martin and the and the other members and. It was a great memory. So it, I think everybody, everybody loves Coldplay. And maybe so, um, of course, Paul McCartney, it would be such a great, great, great honor if we could collaborate with him. Next question, please. You are performing here in Wembley, and you and you are going to broadcast it live. Why here? Why Wembley? I think there is a very symbolic importance of a performance here at Wembley Stadium. And I think there are some, you know, dream stages. Of course, there are stadiums in the United States and Paris, uh, everywhere. Uh, but I think, you know, we, from when we were young, we saw the, you know, me, I, my brother and I, whenever, when we were young, we grew up watching the Live Aid performance, the video. So I felt that, you know, coming here to Wembley, we felt that the, this is a moment 
moment that we want to share with the rest of the world. And, the, and I don't know, I think, just thinking about coming here to Wembley, I barely got any sleep last night. So that's how you know, nervous we are, and that's how fantastic I think this performance is going to be. So I think the PE, all of our fans who watch it live, will also share in a lot of this enthusiasm that we have. So we don't know when, but uh, when we have our World Stadium Tour, uh, we would like to invite you again and have a press conference again. And I think, uh, you know, we to be here was like half, you know, it was a dream and half being serious, but we are you know, thrilled that we are actually here. That, and as one of the members mentioned earlier, that we have our performance here, but we will, our performance will be the same, and our mindset will be the same. And I hope that we can continue to hold on to this, so we can continue to hold on to this mindset wherever we perform. We, when we have a performance or when we have our music, make music, you know, it is, there's only so much that we can try to convey, the sincerity and the message that we can convey. But I, we would like to thank you for being the window through which you know, our message is transmitted. Uh, I guess you already have the interpretation, so, and I don't need to say that again. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Uh, that concludes our press conference. Uh, let's have a big round of applause for BTS. Thank you. Cheers. The Korean wave is shaping up to be an international storm. The incredible surge of K-pop over recent years has been accelerated by social media, and now all the world's a stage for some of the most talented music artists to really show how it's done. This is the rise of K-pop.